Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be setting up Proxmox on my Dell PowerEdge R630. Um, this is going to be using Dell's iDRAC for the remote connection, so I'm not going to be actually physically touching the server for this. I'm going to be installing this via iDRAC. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to want to go to Proxmox's website. We're going to want to download their ISO. So if we go over here, we're going to find Proxmox, and we'll go to Proxmox.com, and we'll go to download their software, wherever that is, Proxmox Virtual Environment, right here, download and we're going to pick the latest ISO installer, which is um, from April 24th, and it's about 1.39 gigabytes. So we'll click Save, and we will let this download here. So as you can see, um, it's got about 30 seconds left, but what we're going to do is we're going to launch our virtual console here on iDRAC. We're going to click Launch. It's going to also download a file here to our downloads. We'll click on the viewer.jn.lp, and we will move this over here to the other window here. That way you can see it better. Um, but basically, we're going to now just click Continue. And it's going to verify, and we're going to accept the risks and click Run. And it is going to actually open up a virtual console from the server here. So we're going to click Run. And as you can see right here, we are actually logged into the server. So we have a virtual console. So let's create virtual media, and we're going to connect virtual media. It's going to pull up a like file explorer window here. Okay, so now we're going to actually map a CD or DVD and click Browse. It's going to pull up our Downloads folder on the PC, and we will click on our Proxmox ISO right here, click Open, and we're going to map the device. So then on our next boot settings, we're going to make sure Virtual CD, DVD, or ISO is selected. We're going to go up to Power, and we're going to do a cold boot. So now it is going to completely reboot, reboot the server. It's going to pull this ISO that we have uploaded over to iDRAC and it should boot to the Proxmox installer. Okay, so we're here in the Proxmox virtual environment installer. Like I said, this is entirely through the um, virtual console. So we're going to click enter to load the installer. It may be slightly slower for the installation just because the ISO is stored on my PC. Um, it's not actually on the server, I don't think. I don't think it transfers it over, but um, so that's why it might take a little bit extra time to get everything going here, but we're going to load the installer. So we're just going to load the installer here and wait for this to finish. All right, so we're back here. It has finished whatever it was doing. We're going to agree to the terms and conditions here, and we're going to set our target hard disk to be the 223 gigabyte SSD. All of these three servers that I'll be setting up, not in all this video, I'm only setting up one in this video, but all of the servers that I have here have two SSDs that are for Ceph, and then one SSD as the boot SSD. So we're going to select that one, we're going to go to next, country, United States, time zone, set your time zone to the time zone you're in. Next you're going to set a password, I would recommend you do something secure, um, I'm going to type in the password that I'm going to use for these servers. And in addition to the password, I have typed in the email address that these servers are going to use just as a contact email. So now we're going to click next, and we're going to make sure our network interface is selected, so in this case I only have one um, NIC connected, which is going to be fine. Um, for the purposes of this video, but I would recommend you have two NICs or link aggregated to get more redundancy and more speed to your server. Um, the host name or the fully qualified domain name, in this case, is going to be px-demo.beam.beamnetworks.dev. This IP address and gateway are totally fine. I don't really care for the purposes of this video. Now we're going to click Next. It's going to ask us to confirm all of our information on here. So every setting we just did, it wants us to confirm it to make sure it's all accurate and true to what we need um, for our setup. And yes, we're going to install. It's going to go through the whole installation process, and we'll be good to go here with the fresh Proxmox installation. We'll come back here in a few seconds um, with the actual installation instructions um, for the kind of the post-install um, setup. Okay, so we're back now. Um, Proxmox has finished the installation. It's automatically rebooted back into uh, just the Proxmox standard GUI. Um, so we're gonna open up Google Chrome here, and we're going to fire up the Proxmox web interface. So if we go over here to a new tab, and we can grab the IP here, it's .235. So we went to the IP address of the Proxmox server. We're going to click proceed to the IP, and we're going to fill in the login information we previously used during the setup, and we're going to say... Okay, so um, you'll notice there's different realms for authentication. The Proxmox VE server is the um, kind of alternative authentication method. Um, that is the user account you can create on Proxmox that does not create a Linux account um, for that user. Just so in case that matters, that's kind of how that works. Um, you'll see we do not have a valid subscription. Uh, we do know this, we're going to click OK. 
Um, the first thing I'd like to do here is we're going to expand our storage. So if you notice here, the local LVM disk does take 140 gigs, um, and that means there's only 68 gigs left to the operating system itself. So on the console shell here, we're going to type this in. We're going to type in LV remove dash dev dash PVE slash data. And we're going to say, yes, we do want to remove this. Now we're going to say LV resize, LV resize, um, and then dash L. And then we're going to say plus 100% all capitals free. If I can spell it correctly. And then that's going to be on slash dev slash PVE slash root. Um, and then finally, we're going to say resize 2FS slash dev slash mapper slash PVE dash root. Okay, so that just deleted the local LVM drive. As you can see, there's no space available. So we have to go back up to data center, storage, local LVM, and we're going to remove this guy right there. And this just gave us 226 gigs on the... Um, local storage so that kind of expands your storage so the next thing that we're going to do and the final thing we'll do in this video is we're going to do the proxmox um, installation scripts so if we go here we can find the helper scripts is what they're called actually so we're going to going to go to helper-scripts.com and we're going to browse scripts um, and now if we go over here to the proxmox ve post install we're going to click more info and we will then be able to locate this script that we can run here on our Linux, um, on our SSH session. So we can actually just copy this right here, click to copied, and now we can move over our Termius session. And on Termius is where we're going to actually run the script. So I'll make this a little bit larger here. That way you can see what we are doing. We're going to paste this in there. And this is going to run the post install script. So we're going to say, yes, we do want to run this. And it's going to correct the package manager sources. We're going to click yes. Um, and disable the enterprise repository, yes. We're going to say yes to all of these prompts. We're going to switch the packages for Ceph, that kind of thing, and add the test packages, and it's going to even remove the subscription, and it's giving you a kind of disclaimer here that it that you should pay for the support for Proxmox to support the developers in this. But for this video, it's just a tutorial, so we're going to move on here. Uh, it says if you plan to use it, utilize a single node instead of a clustered environment, you can disable unnecessary high availability services. Um, so basically, this is saying if you're not going to cluster your Proxmoxes together, then you should, um, in this case, I am going to cluster them together, so I'm going to not disable the high availability services. And yes, we do want to update Proxmox as well. So um, this is the settings that I used, kind of all laid out here if you want to see those um, for future reference. Um, it's going to update our Proxmox. We're, it's going to then prompt us to reboot Proxmox, and that is going to be it for our installation of Proxmox. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it was informational and helpful to you in installing Proxmox. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next video.